Good evening. It's my pleasure to see you once again. Thank you to Kelleher and McLeod for uh, sponsoring this evening. And uh, we have um, Calgary from Canada. Here it is, uh, Robert Minchuk from Brazil originally. It's a pleasure to have you. My Mr. pleasure to be here, my name. Thank you. We have a very exciting concert tonight. Uh, we're actually sold out, and I think two seats sold on the stage. So there are going to be some people that are going to be blown out by just vir sheer virtue of uh, vibration tonight. But um, one I'm of so the I'm so happy to see that many people that come to hear a conductor speak, you know? Because usually n the musicians don't want the conductors to say anything. They just want you to conduct. You know, but I guess you do want to hear a few words from a conductor. <laughs> yes, thank we do. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had an intense week with the uh, orchestra. We have a wonderful program, not easy program for the orchestra. It's a virtuoso program. I was thinking we'd start talking about Nielsen primarily. It's a very interesting piece, and you have quite a bit of experience with that. This piece is quite extraordinary, and Nielsen, he really intended to be quite extraordinary because uh, he wrote it um, right at the, at the end or during World War I. So of course he was much influenced by everything that was happening in Europe. He is from Denmark and uh, of course that affected uh, everyday life and, and the sounds of war. And you will hear that especially in the last movement. You will see that the symphony is a very visual piece of music. It's, it's always wonderful to come to the concert because besides listening to the music, you can see the music happening, especially with this piece. You know, at the end of the last uh, movement, you have this battle between two sets of timpanos, and you, you, see them, you will see them placed at the, in the back of the, of the stage two full sets of timpano. That alone is something very unique that uh, a few composers had attempted. Gustav Mahler uh, used in some of his symphonies two sets of timpano. But this is even more striking than any of the Mahler symphonies. So the First World War had a lot to do with this. But he was really inspired on how life can survive a world war. I mean, this was the very first conflict the world had never seen anything like that in modern uh, times. Um, and, um, and he was inspired to really uh, represent in music how life can uh, sustain itself. Uh, of course, uh, he, wasn't aware, he wasn't aware that a few years later they would invent something called a nuclear bomb, right? Um, this was pre-nuclear age. Um, but how it, it, it regenerates and how it will continue no matter what. So, in, in extinguishable, inextinguishable, the title he gave to it is how you cannot suppress life, uh, human life, and nature. And that's what uh, he, he, that's what's really inspired him. Yeah. Um, one of the things I like the way you arranged uh, the orchestras that you have, the, the tympan is actually high up, so they'll be standing up from the crowd, and you have the stereo effect, evident, evidently, which I think probably was intended by, by Nielsen um, to begin with. Um, so this is, are there any parts in this, uh, uh, in this symphony that you might want to point out uh, to the audience to watch for. So for example, if uh, it's a quiet passage and they're going to get scared by the sun, we should tell them, you know, have a uh, <laughs> warning. Oh, it's always nice to be surprised, you know? Have a wake up, uh, you know, alarm right in the middle of the symphony. And many composers did that. I think they did it on purpose, you know? The famous one is Tchaikovsky's Pathétique, you know, because he does that in beautiful introduction in the first movement, and all of a sudden comes this boom. <laughs> and everybody just wake up, wakes up. Stravinsky did that in, in the ballet, in the Firebird. You know, there's this beautiful, sweet melody, puts everybody to sleep, and then comes this huge fortissimo chord. Um, but yeah, we, we don't really have something as, as uh, sudden as a striking like that. But it's very contrasting. You know, you will see the first movement is very powerful, dense, intense. 
he will only use the two sets of tympanos in the very last movement. Uh, the, f the, the first movements, he only w uses one set of tympanos, but it's, the first movement is very intense, very powerful, and he's always playing with the uh, massive sounds of the string sections against the woodwinds, against the brass, with tympano. So, um, um, but very soon the symphony g gets into a very melodic, like a hymn-like tune. So the main theme you will hear in the first movement he brings back, at the very end of the symphony, he brings back this sort of uh, hymn of hope. It's almost like a, 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 a message of hope that he really, uh, in the middle of all the struggle and all the confusion, there is this light at the end of the tunnel. But the second movement is, is really very uh, unique. Uh, and I think no other composer has attempted to do that before. Uh, Nielsen, he basically works with the woodwinds. So here we have an orchestra of uh, almost a hundred people on stage. And then comes to the second movement and you will hear the woodwinds, you know, like an octet, two clarinets, two bassoons, dialoguing with two flutes, two oboes, and then he adds more woodwinds, because for this program we have three oboes, three flutes, three clarinets, three bassoons. Um, and then you hear the strings coming in only with the pizzicato, uh, which is when they pluck the strings with their fingers. So it's a very soft accompaniment. So after all this turmoil, the second movement is so nice, it's like a minuet, it's almost like a, a Baroque uh, or Renaissance dance that he introduces in the middle of this 20th century uh, work. Third movement, dramatic the strings, he has all the violins in unison playing, and then the cellos and the violas in unison, dialoguing with the violins, with a striking accompaniment by the tympano. And, and uh, you, will, you will hear that very, because the movement is very intense. So second movement, sweet, with the woodwinds in this little dance, minuet. Third movement, dramatico, or quasi adagio, very dramatic piece. And then you will hear this, it, the transition to the last movement is fantastic. It's this virtuosistic passage that starts with the violins, rapid scales. It, it almost gives you a feeling of being a roller coaster, you know, a musical roller coaster, going up and down very fast, and they gotta be perfectly together. And then comes the lower strings, violas, cellos, and basses, imitating, you know, having this counterpoint with the, with the violins, very exciting. And then the second timpani finally comes in as if interrupts this game of, uh, of the strings with the fast notes. And it's funny enough, the, the, the last movement starts with a theme that's melodic and is energetic. It's beautiful. And I have to tell, I mean, Nielsen was inspired by many composers. Uh, so you might hear... Um, inspiration by Shostakovich, mm -hmm. sometimes inspiration by Bruckner. Um, but I don't know how he got the theme, the initial theme for the last movement, because it really sounds like a Western movie. <laughs> but, you know, having written this in 1914, I don't know if, uh, how he got that, but it's, you will hear that. You know, so it sounds like Silverado, all these great films of uh, Hollywood, you know, or even some of the, the Copeland the music, uh, even though it was written before all of these, of course. So it's, it's very interesting, very, very expressive, full of joy. Um, but then at the end, the very the last coda is, is a battle, you know, very exciting, very exciting, very striking, almost scary. So it, it, it's an exciting symphony, very difficult, demanding. The orchestra is doing a fantastic job. I'm, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to do this here and to perform this for you. Yeah, I, I watched them a little bit. Too. Thank, you. Thank you very much. I watched a little bit of the rehearsal today, and they all look very, very busy. <laughs> when yes. they look. Thank you so much for this. Um, um, so the other composer that was uh, programmed is Theophanidis, and evidently in this day and age, we're, all of us are slightly taken aback by contemporary music because you never know what's going to come your way, and some uh, 
uh, some sounds are strikingly dissonant and not pleasant, at least until you get used to them. Well, in a way, I had this Theophany, this piece, uh, Rainbow Body, is uh, kind of a unique piece that doesn't have, uh, it has a very lush feeling, and mm -hmm. at least it creates some feelings in it in each one of us on stage when we perform, and I'm sure also for the audience, that are unique and you'll remember for a long time to go. What do, what do you think about this? Uh? Theophanides is one of the uh, now most um, demanded uh, com uh, composer, living composer from Canada, and I have done another piece of his. Um, and he's always in, you know, inspired by, by nature and by, by beautiful things. Um, the piece that I did uh, f for him is it's a piece uh, by him is a piece that he was inspired by the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis, and um, you might consider doing this at some point because it goes with the, the with the film of all the beautiful uh, Northern Lights and the music. Um, it's it's like uh, you know it has a narrator that tells the story in the origin in the. Uh, of the northern lights, the myth uh, behind it and all that. So it's a very colorful piece. And this piece is also very colorful, Rainbow uh, the Body. Uh, he basically sets the piece around one main theme in, in different ways. Sometimes, you know, with a very uh, dramatic trombones in the middle of the piece, the trombones are playing this theme, the three trombones in a very energetic uh, and dramatic mood. Um, the, the strings at the opening of the piece introduce that in a very uh, sweet, dolce um, um, version of this theme. Uh, and it, he makes several variations, contrasting variations. Uh, it ends with this apotheotic version of this theme, which also is a hymn. So, in a way, the piece also has a similarity with the, the main theme from Nielsen's fourth symphony, which is, which is this uh, apotheotic heroic theme at the, at the very end. Uh, and there is a surprise at the very end. I don't know if you want to tell them. I think we should keep that for, uh, for the concert, but. Yeah? <laughs> okay. So notice what happens, because there is something unusual that goes on at the very end of this uh, opening piece, Rainbow Body, yes? It's quite unique, quite fun. The orchestra is having fun, and um, I'm certainly having fun with them, and I hope you, you also enjoy it. You know, this, it, it's always uh, difficult to find good works of modern composers, you know? It's, it was always like that, you know? At the time of Mozart, we sometimes forget that there were hundreds of composers. And very few survived. We have Mozart and Haydn, right? Time of Beethoven also. Um, so all throughout uh, um, history, we had really hundreds, if not thousands, of composers that were composing and being performed and then forgotten. You know, the music would not uh, survive or would not be programmed again. So nowadays, the same thing happens. We have. Uh, hundreds of uh, composers writing new music, you know, some of it will survive, some of it, some of it will not survive, it will be played once or twice. I think uh, Theophanides is one of these composers that stands out and uh, the music is well written, the music is, is intelligent and at the same time, it's, uh, at the same time it's, it is inspiring uh, it's melodic. He's not afraid to write a melody to use traditional harmony, which is um, which is refreshing, you know. And uh, the music of the 21st century has that characteristic. Until the end of the, the 20th century, the um, you know composers are almost forbidden to write melodies or harmonic music. Now we have this freedom again. But now we have a special guest with us. Usually you see Olga play, but today uh, we were able to snitch her away for this uh, evening. Um, it's the first time for the two of you collaborating, and uh, it was a wonderful rehearsal today. So uh, welcome, Olga, and um, Thank you. I'm Thank just going to let you uh, take the audience with you wherever you want. <laughs> 
I'm very happy I'm here and I'm working with uh, Maestro. Um, we actually was uh, trying to work together for a long time, so <laughs> it's wonderful that we have the opportunity finally, uh, especially here, it's a special place for me. Uh, every time I'm here in Albuquerque, um, I feel uh, so much love, so much uh, great energy, and of course, it's always sunny. It's always, <laughs> it's always happy place. So it's, it's the place where everyone wants to be, I think. And um, of course, uh, music which we play, um, especially tonight's program, is just a fantastic program. Uh, and of course, the piece which I play, uh, Rachmaninoff's Second Concerto, is uh, such a familiar piece and such a famous piece. Everyone loves the music, everyone knows the music, and um, it's just such a masterpiece. Um, so I am sure that we will enjoy um, all together that experience tonight. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that we will have um, many, many more experiences like this together. And um, I hope I'm um, coming back um, soon. So <laughs> <laughs> We're working on I it. Just, uh, <laughs> I heard about that. So, so yeah, uh, we're just working on that. And um, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, uh, in this community, uh, the first Olga Kern International Piano Competition will happen um, this coming November. Um, this will be very exciting as well. So uh, I'll see you again very soon. Uh, if not to play, uh, to, to be here and to uh, hear great music, great talents. So I'm looking forward for that as well. Um, and I want to, of course, uh, thank the orchestra, New Mexico Philharmonic. Um, I played with them so many times already in so many different programs. And um, every time is just such a joy. Uh, such a great musicians in the orchestra. And they're all just so nice and, and warm. And uh, they want to work. You know, they want to make a great music. So that is a very, very uh, important for, for the soloists, you know, because uh, with the orchestra, you never know what, what, what to expect. It's a big group of people, and um, we all need to uh, make uh, one big idea which will um, be um, agreeable to all parts, you know, me, orchestra, maestro. <laughs> so <laughs> this is why we uh, rehearse and try to make um, you know, music even uh, even better. So, uh, in in our interpretation. So, I think that um, with this orchestra, I always um, achieve uh, something very special. So, um, I'm sure um, tonight will sound great. Thank you so much, Olga. We don't have you here very often to talk because we have it done. You come and prepare. Um, I have a question. You played this concerto so many times. How do you find a, um, a renewal process in your own soul so that every time you play it, every time I hear you play it, never sounds the same and it's grabbing me. So I must have it's a mechanism a, of discovering the music. Uh, definitely, um, of course, you know, um, every time this music must sound different. I mean, any uh, piece I play, uh, for uh, many times, it needs to be uh, different. Otherwise, I would be bored, the, the, the public would be bored, there will be no interest at all. So it always needs to be interesting for me, of course. And everything is actually written in the scores. Composer, especially, you know, music of Rachmaninoff, um, he, he just indicates everything in there. You know, all the dynamic things, everything what he wants to do, the accents, the staccato, legato, everything is in there. And, um, you know, every time I just, you know, need to mm, look at the scores, open um, pages, and just go through it. And I always find something new. It's always something new. Uh, and it's incredible. It's always, uh, there are some little things, little phrases, that always can be played differently. And I talk um, with... Um, uh, Maestro Zuckerman, um, uh, two weeks ago I was in London um, and he was conducting, we, we did Tchaikovsky first concert and he asked me the same thing. How is possible that, you know, I mean, you played Tchaikovsky first probably a million times already. Um, when I played Tchaikovsky concerto, I couldn't already do this because it's just, uh, you know, I, at, at one point I understood that I just need to uh, stop playing it for some time. I said, Maestro, I think probably you played it much more time than me, <laughs> first of all. And uh, second of all, yes, yeah, some pieces I also need to um, just put up like a little bit for some time 
um, and wait for the next wave when I feel like I'm ready to say something new in it. So this is how usually it, it goes. With the Rachmaninoff's uh, concertos, you have the advantage of having recordings of Rachmaninoff himself performing, yes? How, how do you feel about uh, the recordings of Rachmaninoff performing yeah. his own pieces? It's very dangerous to uh, listen to him because he was such a genius as a pianist, <laughs> you know, and as a composer, he was a genius. So uh, he had such a uh, huge influence when he played. Even in the recording, you can feel that. And you immediately want to uh, copy some of his, uh, you know, things, some of his um, performances. And it's, this is why it's dangerous. So, um, of course, I know the recordings by heart. Are your hands as big as, as they say he had <laughs> like a he huge had a, hand, right? Yeah, the, the joke, uh, you, know, you know, the joke of uh, Rachmanov of hand on, on YouTube. Uh, it's a very famous uh, fan. Uh, um, uh, the, the uh, what, what's their names? They're they're, they're very very famous. Um, oh, the, 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 uh, you, uh, piano guys. Exactly. Yes. 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 So <laughs> um, they they were playing um, Prelude um, C sharp minor, and they were just showing how big actually Rachmaninoff's hand was. They they, they just made that a huge uh, wooden uh, two wooden pieces, <laughs> and they were just passing uh, one to another, and uh, just to play the chords. <laughs> in that, in that uh, C-sharp minor prelude. So yeah, he had a huge hands. Um, I have um, very proportional for, for my body hands. So <laughs> they're very comfortable. They're not huge, but they're very comfortable for Rachmaninoff music. And um, I know that a lot of pianists, even with the smaller hands playing it, um, I, I think it's not so comfortable, but they're doing it. There are ways to do it because Rachmaninoff was such a great pianist. He wrote everything for piano so comfortably. So it's always mm -hmm. comfortable. Right. Everything is comfortable. Um, even the, the most uh, difficult uh, places, uh, you always can find the way to, to do it. So, um, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank we you. have about uh, six minutes. Okay. I would like to allow for two questions, if possible, from the audience. And uh, I don't know if we have any hands up or not that we can see. And then uh, if we have time for one more, we'll go with that. Anybody has any questions? Olga doesn't come very often, so thank you. <laughs> I would like to know more about the competition that's coming up. How can we help and this sort of thing? Oh, that is a great question. Um, a little bit more about the competition, uh, which will be here in November. Uh, from 12 to 24 of November 2016, and um, uh, there will be uh, 21 to 25 uh, contestants uh, from, um, we will have a screening jury. Um, first, they will, uh, they will send the applications and then um, recordings uh, on YouTube, any video recordings uh, of their performances without any cuts. It's just the fluent, uh, fluent uh, performance. And then uh, the screening jury will um, take from 21 to 25 contestants, the best ones. And they will come here, it will be three rounds, um, two rounds uh, solo um, recitals. Uh, in the second round, which is the semi-final round, there will be one um, contemporary piece, which is already written by a British composer Rory Boyle. It was uh, written specially for uh, the um, competition. And uh, he has, um, I can't say this secret actually, it's not a secret, uh, I think it's very exciting that he actually has in this composition um, a moment of uh, Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto. So uh, we will need to listen and find out. Um, and then uh, he will come for, for that round to hear all the contestants who will be playing his piece and he will judge who will be the best in his opinion. And of course, every other jury members will also choose their own. And then there will be four finalists and uh, four piano concerti and um, um, final round with the New Mexico Philharmonic. Uh, and then uh, the first prize winner uh, will get a lot of engagements in the recording and really I hope um, to get management as well. 
uh, we are working on it and uh, we're working it's very exciting everything what's uh, happening uh, we'll have a board meeting tomorrow um, and I'm doing some uh, fundraisers uh, fundraiser concerts and um, I'm talking to everyone uh, I just been in so many countries lately in uh, France South Africa England uh, everywhere in the States so I always pass the poster or a flyer and I talk about it and of course you know New Mexico Philharmonic doing a lot of things and uh, Mariano who is a, a director of a managing director of the competition is uh, doing so much stuff and uh, um, we have a wonderful board of directors and they're all uh, participating uh, a lot actually it's a great help from each of us and um, if um, any of you uh, would like to any volunteering uh, it will be a, a great help of course um, we will need to uh, have someone who will take contestants uh, to the music school to practice and back just the transportation someone needs to be backstage to help them uh, be prepared for um, you know go on stage and perform um, uh, host families so mm, we, we still uh, need to uh, work on some things um, and we already get a lot of responses um, to host the contestants, uh, to help with uh, um, the pianos and the practicing. So uh, I think it's going very well. And if I could just add uh, that the exciting thing is that the final round will be part of the season subscription. And uh, one of the prizes we're offering is called the popular prize. So although we have a committee that will decide who the grand winner is of the, of the competition, you as an audience member will be given a choice to choose your favorite, which sometimes will not match the same favorite that the committee has. That has happened a lot in competitions. So we'd love to have a participation. Of course, if you would like to become a, a, a member of the donor family, that's also very possible. And you can always leave your name um, and the phone number with the people, um, with our volunteers at the intermission. And we will uh, give you a call next week and, uh, and guide you through how you could become a donor. There is a website uh, which is called olgakurncompetition.org and that has all the information about the competition already. So um, I think we're almost at the end of this, uh, unfortunately, uh, this uh, um, wonderful session with Olga and with Maestro Minchuk. I want to thank you both uh, for thank being you. here. Thank it's you. so wonderful. Thank you. And once again, thank you to Kelleher and McLeod, our sponsors for this pre-concert talk. Enjoy the concert. Thank you. Thank you very much.